Hey guys, it's time to do my uh, tips for round eight. The first game we have is West Coast hosting North Melbourne at Patterson Stadium on the Friday night. It's a huge game for both sides as they're both three and four at the moment and they've won their last two games. Uh, the Eagles have had the wood over North recently as they've won their last four encounters against them. Really tough pick this one as West Coast haven't really been that convincing at home except for against the uh, Western Bulldogs. But I'll give North uh, a real chance here. I've really liked their early season form and I think they'll be able to cause an upset here and win by four points. Brisbane travel to Etihad Stadium to take on Essendon on the Saturday. The Bombers won by 67 points last time so it wasn't really difficult there. And they've won their last two games against Brisbane uh, relatively comprehensively. Brisbane were pretty competitive last week against West Coast for probably three and a bit quarters, but the Eagles class and just had more run in the legs, got them home to win by just over four goals. Essendon really shouldn't struggle here. I think they'll uh, get a big win against Brisbane by 75 points. Hawthorne and GWS head to Tassie on the Saturday afternoon to face up against each other. Hawthorne coming off a really good win against the Swans last week with a great four-quarter performance to face the Giants outfit who haven't won a game yet. The last time they played, it was Hawthorne getting 53 scoring shots and uh, they won the game by 162 points and could have been a whole lot more. They kicked 28 goals, 25, so uh, it was a pretty easy 162-point victory there. Hawthorne should have a day out. I think they'll win by 150 points. This game coming up should be a beauty. It's between Gold Coast and the Western Bulldogs at Metricon Stadium late on the Saturday afternoon. It was Gold Coast getting a really big win against Melbourne last week by 10 goals, and that's their biggest win in the club's short history. The Western Bulldogs were really good last week against North. They were very competitive for three quarters, but then they faded away in the last quarter and they lost by nine goals in the end, which was a little bit disappointing. In three games, these two sides have played against each other. The Western Bulldogs have won all of them. And the, last, the most recent game was at TIO Stadium with Western Bulldogs winning by 38 points. It is at Metricon Stadium, and if there's one side that doesn't mind a win at Metricon Stadium, it's uh, the Gold Coast Suns, so uh, they're a real big chance this week. I think they'll be able to get the win on this occasion. I'm going to tip them to win by 15 points. Geelong and Collingwood host a blockbuster at the MCG on the Saturday night. No matter where these sides are on the ladder, it's always, it's always a good contest. And Geelong didn't actually defeat Collingwood in 2012. They uh, got defeated by 12 points early on in the year, and later on in the year, Collingwood uh, won by 31 points. Collingwood's defence has been a bit leaky at times this year, and the Cats has as well, uh, it's fair to say. And Geelong certainly won't mind that at all. The only thing uh, Collingwood can take their hats off to is Luke Ball's back in the side. And they haven't lost to Geelong since the 2011 Grand Final, so it just makes you wonder whether losing that has uh, made an impact in uh, the way Collingwood go about playing against Geelong. However, I think Geelong will be a bit too flexible and uh, maybe just too good. Could go either way, but I'm going to go with Geelong on this occasion by 30 points. Another really good clash is Sydney up against Fremantle, and this will be at the FCG on the Saturday night. The last time they played, it was Sydney getting the job done by 13 points. Fremantle, however, had won three of the last five games against them, and that's been home and away, so it's definitely tough to pick a winner this week. Two really defensive and contested teams up against each other will probably make for a low-scoring affair and probably also lots of stoppages. Fremantle also without John Griffin, so they're a bit low on the ruck stocks at the moment. I think Zach Clark's taking over this week. And, yeah, the injuries aren't really uh, too good for them at the moment. And they've also got Nat Fife and Stephen Hill coming back, so that's good, good news for the Dockers fans. It's a game that could go either way because these two teams are so evenly matched. Although Sydney, I think they'll be really keen to... Keen as mustard to make amends for their poor performance against the Hawks last week. And Fremantle, with their injuries, doesn't seem to be too good, even though they have defeated Collingwood last week, which was an upset. Sydney also at home should be pretty handy for them. I think they'll win by 27 points. Carlton hosts Port Adelaide at Etihad Stadium on the Sunday. 
Uh, it's just a must-win game for the Blues, and I'll say this a fair bit. Otherwise, you know, finals footy is just uh, basically out the window. They've got Jared Wade coming back into the side. They've got Gibbs and probably Karazzo as well, so you know, injuries not really an excuse for them. Last time it was Port Adelaide upsetting the Blues, winning by 54 points at Amy Stadium. They absolutely thrashed them in the end. Even though Port did win that night, Carlton have won the previous four against them, so they don't mind matching up against the power. The last time they played at Yad Stadium was in 2008, and they've just played at Amy Stadium pretty much every year. And that day it was Carlton uh, getting the win by 66 points. It's also a must win for Port Adelaide as well. I don't think they want to lose three on the trot. That will make uh, their supporters a little bit concerned. Carlton should be good enough. Uh, they just, as I said, they need to win it. Otherwise, they might as well just keep kiss their finals hopes uh, goodbye. But I'm reluctantly going with them by 19 points. Melbourne face Richmond at the MCG on the Sunday with what is a huge task ahead of them. Just at the moment, it doesn't seem like they have any passion or purpose with uh, the way they play. It's quite sad, really. The last time they played against each other, it was Richmond getting the job done by 23 points, so there wasn't a whole lot in it. The Tigers have won the last three against them, so they haven't really uh, struggled against them in recent times. They've also got a few stars back into their lineup this week, so it could make for a belting. Uh, Richmond shouldn't have uh, too many concerns here. I think they'll be able to get the job done by 67 points. The final match of the round is Adelaide up against St Kilda, which is which will be at Amy Stadium with, with what should be a fascinating contest. The last time they were up against each other, it was Adelaide winning by only four points at Amy Stadium. Uh, the Saints kicked a few goals late and uh, really made the margin look uh, pretty respectable. Rewalt seems to be in career best form for the Saints at the moment, or arguably career best form. And even though their recent record at Amy hasn't been convincing, I'd give them a fair income chance to uh, potentially cause an upset this week. From previous games, it seems Kurt Tippett's been the match winner. He's been quite a catalyst against St Kilda. And then without him, obviously now, he's at Sydney, and without Tex Walker for the rest of the year. So it just might make things a little bit interesting. I'm going to tip the Saints in an upset by 13 points. So those are my tips for round 8. And on a shocking week last week, I reckon those upsets any other day of the week would not have been upsets. In previous rounds, I've gone with a similar mindset with how last round, round 7, panned out. And obviously uh, it didn't quite pay off. And then there's a million upsets when I least expect it. But, oh, well, that's, uh, that's footy tipping at its finest. Uh, comment your tips for round 8 if you want. And thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you guys all soon.